Hey guys, it's Tech Rain here, and today's video we'll be reviewing the ASUS Prolar X870E Creator Wi Fi motherboard. This is by far the best motherboard for creators, streamers in general, who are looking for the most IO on their motherboard, but at the same time, the most PCI expansion. Now, when it comes to building PCs, I would always recommend spending $100, $150 on your motherboard if you're just doing gaming and some simple tasks. The reason why you're spending so little on your motherboard, because at the end of the day, it's just trying to get the job done of getting everything to work together. You're not buying it for any special features, unless you are a streamer you're looking for two 16 by slots that support one full 16 by for your gpu for gaming and another 16 by slot for maybe an internal capture card but at that price point you're probably around 150 to 200 dollars around that but what this makes this motherboard special for its price point being 500 dollars well technically it's like 408 dollars but the tariffs and stuff yeah, it's over 500 dollars at this point uh what makes it different is because it actually has multiple 16 by slots for multiple expansion cards meaning that if you want to add like uh two 10 gigabit network cards or maybe install two gpus because it does support gen 5 lanes which is kind of ridiculous you can do quite a bit with the actual pcie support on this actual board and especially the other features that come with it which we're going to go over that all here today so let's get in the unboxing so first of all we got to open this thing on up now this board does support Wi-Fi 7 and has multiple 16 by slots, three of them. And we're gonna carefully lift out the bottom of the box separate from that. It does come with a little manual and some additional info for the actual board. And on the bottom side of the box, we have access to a few things. We got a display port cable. We got a few SATA cables for this actual motherboard. So you can plug in your SSD or hard drives with it. You got some adhesive pads for your actual M.2s. Got some replacement screws for your M.2 slots because they are using one of those ones that are like a little lever. You just slip them in, which is nice. That's funny. You get a little pro art roller. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. So that's nifty if you're interested in that. Then you have a connector for your actual motherboard. I'm not entirely sure what this is exactly for, but you have it. And then you have some additional things on the side too, which I'm not too worried about though. Now on the opposite side, you have access to your Wi-Fi 7 antenna. Now I don't primarily plan to use that, but if you want, if you are a fan of Wi-Fi, you have some high speed Wi-Fi. Now the next thing we gotta do to get access to the board is open up this top flap here. It actually has a little protective foam under the board. Carefully pull this on out and get access to the board in itself. So here's how it looks right out of the box. Looks very nice, I will quickly say. We'll get some additional light on that so you can kind of get a better look at this. So what you get with this actual motherboard is the following. First of all, we have our four RAM slots. Now they are closed to one side, so you have to open up one side from the latch to actually just install your RAM into your motherboard. But this does support up to 256 gigabytes of memory. And it supports up to like 8,000 to 6,000 megahertz. Uh, but of course, I've seen some videos where they say it doesn't actually cap out at stable 8,000. 8, so like you might only be able to cap it out at six, which is perfectly fine because I do plan to do a PC build with this. Uh, so if you don't want to miss on that, definitely get subscribed because we're going to install 64 gigabytes of RAM and enable 6,000 megahertz. So the only thing to keep in mind is does not support ECC memory. So yeah, that just means error correcting memory. It does not support it, unfortunately. The next thing you have are your three 16 by slots. This is the big part of why I bought this motherboard is that the first two slots here support Gen 5 speeds with a Ryzen 9000 series and also 7000 series CPU. If you are using 8000 series CPU, they only will be running at Gen 4. So top slot is 16 by 16. The bottom slot here supports 16 by 16. But if you do occupy both of these slots with actually like a GPU, maybe an expansion card, network card, whatever it is, it will only run by eight. So it'll be by eight for both of them. But then again, it'll be the same speed as a 16 by slot as by four. That's the cool thing about this actual board. Well, this is nice about this motherboard, and this is a big reason why I got it, is you can put your GPU in your top slot here, then install two really nice high-end capture cards, because still it's gonna be running by eight, and this one's gonna be running by four. They have a good amount of spacing between them. So you can install maybe like your Elgato Camlink Pro capture card, which is a capture card that supports like four devices. And then you got the bottom slot here for your actual Elgato uh, Mark II 4K for a nice high 8, 1080p 240 hertz uh, capture rate of your gameplay. The bandwidth on this board for those slots is the main reason why I bought it because there's like no other good motherboards that actually have what I'm looking for besides this one. And the cool thing about this top slot here has a quick release. So if you actually push down on it and then pull it up, 
they'll actually come undone. And now there are some thermal pads here with a little plastic I can remove. Same thing on the opposite side, they actually keep M.2 nice and cool. And if you want to put it back on, all you have to do is take the little hooks here, line it up with a slot at an angle, and you just push the latch and then push it on down. And that's how you reinstall your actual M.2 slot, which is nice. Now the other slots will actually be under here and you just have to unscrew these actual four screws. There's one here, there, and there, and same thing here. Now an important thing to keep in mind, this top slot does support Gen 5 drives, which is nice to actually see. A lot of motherboards are actually starting to support that. Uh, Samsung released like their new Gen 5 drive. I have not checked it out though. I want to get one. My only problem with some of these motherboards with all these screws over there, I'm not too slots, it's kind of a hassle. But once we remove this here, you can actually see the additional screws for our M.2 slots, M.2.2. So this is the one, if you use this slot right here, it does support the full slides to M.2, but if you use it, it will cut down your speed on your actual uh, PCIe slot. So you don't want to use this one. They all do support Gen 4 speeds by four, which is nice. So your M.2.1 you want to use and M.2.3 you want to use if you do install up to three M.2s. And they have this cute little latch that you can like easily put your M.2s in. So all you would theoretically have to do Take your M.2, line it up with the slot, pull it all on in, push it on down, and it just pinches into place with the actual little holder here, which I absolutely love that. Now you wanna put this back on, all you have to do is carefully line it on up with the actual M.2 spots. Once you line it on up, it'll just be flat and you screw it back down. With that, we're all good to go for our M.2s to so actually solve them if you want to. Now, an important thing to keep in mind, the M.2 slot for your top spot, for your Gen 5 ones, goes to the actual CPU. Same thing with the dot two one, it goes to your CPU. But the actual uh, three and four and dot two slots goes to the chipset right here. Now we have a, quite a ton of connections, so I wanna go over them real quick here. First of all, you have your HD audio header. You have your comms header. You have a channel three header for your fans. Two ARGB connections right here. And I'm pretty sure this is a thermal sensor header, but I could be wrong. I'll correct myself and post if I am. Three USB 2.0 headers. Then we got two SATA headers right here for your actual SATA devices, whether it be your SSDs or hard drive, that actually do six gigabits. Oh, here we go. I found the thermal header and also the other stuff for your M.2's testing and stuff. Okay, never mind. I'm not sure what the other one was then from earlier. You got your system fan five here, your front header for your power switch, uh, reset switch, and any other connections you would plug into your case. You got two SATA connections right here that support six gigabits. So that's all four of them. Your USB 3.0 for your actual case. Then we got here a U5G actual header. Then you got your Type-C connection for your Type-C port on your actual case you can plug into. Your 24 pin to power the actual motherboard. Another actual ARGB connection right here. It's cute, they put some little protection things on the actual headers for your actual like CPU pump and stuff. So it actually indicates which is what right here. So the first one here is your CPU fan. The second one is your CPU output. And the other one is your AIO pump for the black one. And you got a CPU volt if you wanna like do something with that. I'm not too sure, entirely sure what you do with it. And then finally, you have your two actual eight pins for your powering your CPU if you wanna give it extra juice. Now for the back side of the motherboard, you have an HDMI out for checking your actual PC. You have a display port actual out. And on top of that too, seven USB 10 gigabit ports for any high bandwidth devices. This is very useful for someone like me who uses a lot of capture cards. So I use a lot of high bandwidth devices on this. So that's perfect. A 10 gigabit LAN onboard and a 2.5. So if you ever had to buy like a network card and plug into your PCI slots, it automatically comes built on this board, which is perfect. And then you have a USB 2 connection right here, which can also be used for your BIOS. You also have a BIOS flashback switch and three USB-C ports. These two do support like up to 40 gigabits, which is insane. And the other one right here supports up to like 20 gigabit. Then your Wi-Fi 7 antennas, and you have a lane in for your mic. The gray one's a lane out for like your speakers or headphones, and another lane in for anything else you want to use it for. Additionally, you have an additional two channel fan headers right here for like your system fan one and two. Now, something I did notice when I started doing my PC build video is that the actual arrow that goes to the CPU is actually on the middle in itself, not actually on the socket. Usually there'd be a black area though to indicate where the direction the CPU properly goes, but it's on the metal instead, which I find interesting. Let's go over my final thoughts now on the ASUS ProR X878 Creator Wi-Fi. Does it actually good for its price point? And who is this actually for? And would I recommend buying it? So first of all, $500 for what you actually get for this other for this motherboard it's pretty good because I don't see any other motherboards on the actual market that provide the things it actually has, like the three PCIe slots for maybe some expansion cards, 
capture cards, or maybe some network cards. You don't really find any other boards on the market that have the bandwidth of this actual board. This motherboard is more you're buying it for its actual features than anything else. There's no reason to buy this motherboard if you're just gaming. But if you do need a lot of USB 3 ports on your motherboard or some high speed bandwidth PCIe slots for selling multiple capture cards or other devices like I talked about earlier, or even maybe using it for actually multiple monitors, which I have a friend who's using like all of his ports on his GPU, and then he's using the motherboard ports to actually get more monitors connected. So if you're someone who's looking for the application you can use it outside of just gaming, you're gonna absolutely love this motherboard. And so that's why it's the best motherboard on the market right now. Just because what you can actually do with it outside of gaming makes it absolutely the best. Besides, you know, the price being what it is, it is a high end bar at the end of the day. Yeah, I think this motherboard is awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my honest review here today. If you did, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed to some future tech content, and I'll see you on TechRamp out.